Hi everyone, hi my faithful subscribers, viewers, likers, commenters, hi everyone, how are you guys doing? Well, I'm great, thank you for asking. Um, my birthday was August 19th, I'm 21 now, having a good time, and as well as you can tell, I changed my hair, just felt like I had to chop the dead ends and dye it. I just really like dark hairs on me, so we decided to do that. And so for today's video, jumping right on in. Oh, we got a stray. Um, jumping right on in. What we're going to do is I'm going to be talking about Irish castles. But also raiding Irish castles because, you know... We gotta rate them, you know? Like, five lambs out of five lambs. Makes sense. So, we're gonna start from the tippity top. Okay, so the castle number one is Rock of Cashel. So basically, Rock of Cashel is a pretty big-ass castle. Really big, really beautiful, made of rock. It's in County Tipperary. It was built in, like, like the 10th century or something. Like, super, super old. Super just hella ancient. And, like, there's a legend that says that St. Patrick and the devil were living in a cave together. And then St. Patrick banished Satan, and Satan went and built a castle, which happened to be Rock of Cashel. Um, as well, a lot of the former kings of Munster used to live there. It was kind of their place of residence. They all lived there. Um, yeah, so if you go and visit it now, the cathedral doesn't have a roof. It's because, like, you know, a few centuries ago, they were like, yeah, well, if we leave the roof on, it's going to collapse and fall and kill some dudes. So we're going to take it off. Really... But it's still beautiful. Like, there's lots of old Celtic art, lots of old, like, kind of fresco situations. Um, the thing about, like, medieval, like, Celtic interior, like, paintings, like, if you think about, like, 16th century, like, Veronese stuff, like, on the roof, um, or the ceiling, rather, they're really beautiful and bright and colorful. That wasn't how the Celtics did theirs. It was kind of, it wasn't very ornate. It was very simple, very, like, practical, not a lot of colors. But as the times went by, it got a little co more, definitely a lot more colorful. But in the beginning, the middle of the times, very dark. So not a lot of cute, cute frescoes, but still, like, amazing. Um, so because of this cool good old Celtic medieval castle. Um, I think we're going to give it, I don't know, 10 black kittens out of 10 black kittens. I think that's a good rating. I mean, if you have 10 black kittens out of 10 black kittens, that's like really good, like really, really good. Okay. So I'm glad we've decided that. The next one is Trim Castle. Dun, 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 dun. It's in County Meath. Trim Castle was built by Hugh de Lacey in, actually, when was it built? Let's see. Trim Castle. It's actually really old. Um, I'm going to have to talk a lot about this castle. It's kind of complicated. So it was built in 1172. So, also really old. So, the, basically, the thing is with castles, it's like, when you think of, like, a castle, like, you think of, like, the Disney castle, okay, that's a castle, but, like, traditional medieval castles aren't always like that. Like, generally, they have a keep. So, the keep is, like, going to be this really intense, like, structure where, like, the like, royal family or, like, the, the owner lives, right? And then around the keep, you're going to have, like, the stables, the butchers, the, like, whatever you need around the keep in within, like, the fortress wall. So the keep 
was built in seventeen is in eleven seventy two. Other structures around it will will were built later, but we only really care about the keep. Um, yeah. So basically, what happened? This was during like the Gaius. What are you so happy about? I mean, I'm happy you're happy. <sighs> okay. Anyways, so basically, during this time was the Anglo-Norman invasion. So like what we call England today, it was like where the Anglo-Normans live. They just didn't really have a name like England. Um, so the Anglo-Normans rolled up. They had, well, they had the King of England, but they were called the Anglo-Normans. Um, and so basically the King of England at this time, who was it? I think it was King, King Henry II was like, oh, you did some stuff, Mr. Hugh de Lacey. So you can just have this land. And because the king colonized Ireland, he just decided he owned Ireland and gave away land to people who did stuff. So Hugh did stuff and he got this land. He built his keep, his castle. Um, it took 30 years to build in all. Very long time. I mean, considering it was 1172. So checks out. But now it's owned by the Irish government. So, hmm, it's a pretty castle. It was owned by, built and owned by an Anglo-Norman, but now owned by the Irish government. <sighs> I think we're going to give it um, six shamrocks out of ten shamrocks. Just because the English dude built it. You know, if the English dude didn't build it, we'd be happier. But, alas. Okay. Next, third and final castle we'll be talking about today is Kilkenny Castle. So here's the thing. I don't speak Irish. I've never been to Ireland. Is it Kilkenny or Kilkenny? I thought it was Kilkenny. If there are any Irish Irish people in the audience, please tell me how to pronounce this. I just don't know. So Kilkenny Castle, built in 1195. Um, this is in... County, where is it? Kilkenny, it's in Kilkenny. I love that it's called Kilkenny Castle and it's in Kilkenny. It was also built by an Anglo Norman because, like I said, they helped the invasion of Ireland, helped to colonize it, so the king just gave them land because they did stuff. Um, so basically it was the Butler family who lived there. So the Butler family built it, moved in, arrived after the anglo Norman invasion. So it basically kind of started as like this little wood shack and then eventually like with renovations, renovations, it became this beautiful big like castle. Um, it really is a castle. Like it is beautiful. Um... Yeah, so in 1967, the Butler family actually sold the castle back to the Irish people of Kilkenny. Um, I think it was like 50 pounds, like it was hardly anything, but at least they got their land back. So they basically, the Irish people of Kilkenny bought it so that it didn't fall into ruin because at this time, like a lot of the abandoned, like big houses and castles and stuff were going into ruin just because, like, nobody could live there, nobody could afford to live there, nobody wanted to live there. Um, kind of like these things, they didn't want it, they didn't want it to, ha to happen because it is a historical place, you know. So they did that. Um, and the Butler family was called like Earl, I think it was an Earl. Let's see, it was. They didn't, they weren't called like the Butler family. They had like their whole name. Yeah. They were the Butlers of Ormond. Ormond. Ormond? Yes, they were the Butlers of Ormond. So they were called, he was like the Duke of Ormond. So Mr. Butler, the first one who lived in there, um, what was his name? I think his name was James. Yeah, James Butler, third Earl of Ormond, built it. So yeah. So it was the Butler family, um, no, not Earl, Duke of Ormond. I keep saying Earl, but it's the Duke. It's the Duke of Ormond, the Butler family. Yeah, so 
since it was built, also built by an Anglo-Norman, but sold back to the Irish people. However, since it was sold and not gifted, we have to rate it lower than Trim Castle. It's all about money, right? It's all about money. So, I think we're going to give it five princess frogs out of five princess frogs. What do you think? Is that, is that too generous? No. No. That's too harsh. We're going to give it six princess frogs out of six princess frogs. No, not six. Six princess frogs out of ten princess frogs. Yeah. Because it is beautiful. It is, well, it is prettier than Trim Castle. Considering it is more beautiful than Trim Castle, we're going to give it seven princess frogs out of ten princess frogs. Yeah. That's my final assessment. I'm sticking with it. Okay. Well, yeah. So, Ireland actually has a lot of these castles. And during, like, the colonization of Ireland, a lot of, like, English people came over. And later in history, they didn't build castles. It was rather, like, big houses. Like, what would we call a chateau? Um, but the Irish called them big houses. And since, like, generally, like, the English people would come and just build a big house and become, like, the wealthy people, a lot of the Irish people ended up having to work for them. So they called them big houses. Because, like, that's what they were. They were big houses. And the Irish didn't have anything like that, really, unless they were, like, Irish castles. You know what I mean? Um, yeah. It just looked really pretty. Really pretty. But it's kind of like the same thing with, like, the French castles and the French Revolution. A lot of the stuff in there isn't original. It's kind of the same thing here. A lot of the artifacts in here are not original. Just because during, like, the Irish wars and stuff, um, a lot of it was ransacked. And especially since it was, like, English. It was, there's a lot of history there. I urge everyone to learn about the history of Ireland. There's a lot happened. She's a small country, but she had a lot going on. Um... Yeah, so basically, that's my my chit-chat on raiding Irish castles. Obviously, there's a lot of castles, but these are my favorite ones. Yeah, so if you're planning a trip to Ireland, go to Kilkenny, County Meath, and County Tipperary, and you'll have a good time. Um, yeah, so I hope you enjoyed today's video. If you didn't, well... You still learned something. So, and if you did, thank you so much. Thank you. Okay, goodbye for now. Mwah. Genius.